Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is part two of um, the Seven Thunders teaching. And uh, we've left off at the second thunder. And so now we're going to go to the third thunder. And so here we see the third thunder, that the third thunder is the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Uh, if somebody's just now clicking on this video, uh, there is a first part to this video, which will be linked in the description. And so this is the second part of the teaching. So I would advise you to go to the first part of this teaching on the seven thunders. Uh, because I had to break up the teaching into two parts um, because I was reaching the time limit in my first uh, video that I did on this topic, which is the seven thunders. And so right now we're on the third thunder, and this says, The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Hallelujah. So uh, when the seven thunders utter their voices, uh, the third thunder is that the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. And uh, we see that here in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2. Uh, we see that. Uh, the day of reckoning, hallelujah, which is when the temple in heaven is open, when God comes down and he He brings wrath upon uh, the world. Um, remember, the seven thunders bring wrath, but also favor. A wrath for those who are left behind, favor for those who are caught up to meet the Lord in the air, hallelujah. And so in verse 10, we see this, enter into the rock and hide in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. Okay, so God tells the people who are on the earth to hide themselves in the rocks and cover themselves with dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty because the Lord is thundering with uh, his majestic voice on this day. And so we see this playing out exactly uh, in the sixth seal. We see that when the sixth seal is open, um, which, is, uh, which is the coming of the Lord on the clouds. Uh, we read this in Revelation chapter 6. Revelation 6, um, when the sixth seal is open, I looked and behold, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth, and the full moon became like blood. And the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island were removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, and the great ones, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, and every one, slave and free, hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains, calling on the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? Okay, so look, we see that the people are hiding from the majestic voice of the Lord, the, the seven thunders, when they utter their voices, uh, they hide and uh, they seek shelter. Hallelujah. They seek shelter uh, in the mountains and in the rocks, just like Isaiah says. Isaiah says on that day, uh, the people, the rich and uh, everyone who's, who's left behind, they're going to enter into the rock and hide in the dust for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. That's the third thunder. Uh, the voice of the Lord is full of majesty, okay? Uh, so when the Lord thunders from on high, when, when the Lord thunders, hallelujah, uh, when the Lord uh, thunders, when the Lord gives his voice, uh, his roar from Zion, and he thunders from Jerusalem, the heavens and the earth will shake, okay? And when the heavens and the earth shake, uh, when the Lord gives the third thunder, uh, the people are going to try to enter into the rocks and hide in the dust for the fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. And this is directly connected to the sixth seal. Uh, when Jesus comes on the clouds of heaven, the earthquake comes, the great earthquake. Okay. Uh, the sun and the moon is darkened. Okay. The stars fall from the sky. Okay. The hailstones, as well as the devil and all his angels, they're kicked out. And then, uh, Yeshua comes on the clouds, and the people uh, who are left behind, they want to hide from the wrath of the Lamb, okay? And uh, they say that no one can stand because his wrath has come. Who can stand on this day? No one. Uh, no one. Everyone's going to shake at his presence, 
which is exactly what Ezekiel tells us. Ezekiel 38, which is also uh, connected to this day. He says that when this day comes, that there's going to be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Okay, for in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Okay, the great shaking in the land of Israel is the great earthquake. The great earthquake uh, that we see in the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. Okay, it's the same event. It's the same event. The great earthquake is the same earthquake that he sends uh, on the day uh, when he comes to fight for Israel. Okay, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. That's why we read in Joel that he's going to thunder from Jerusalem. Okay, but the Lord, he's going to give his voice. Uh, he will roar from Zion. Okay, he, he's coming out of heaven. Okay, Zion is the third heaven, Mount Zion. Okay, he, he's, he's, his voice is going to thunder, and, and, and it's going to shake everything. Okay, it's going to shake the heavens and the earth. Okay, like Joel says, he's going to shake everything. The Lord's voice will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth will shake. Okay, so the heavens are going to shake, and the earth is going to shake. The heavens, Mount Zion, the earth, Jerusalem is going to shake. Okay, and those who are left behind, uh, they're going to try to enter into the rock and hide in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. Uh, because the great day of his wrath has come and who can stand? Uh, no one can stand. No one can stand. Everyone's going to shake at his presence, as we see in Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel 38 says that uh, all the fish, so that the fish of the sea, the fowls of the heavens, and the beasts of the field, and all creeping things that creep upon the earth, and, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at his presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. Okay, so no one's going to be able to stand. The only way that we'll be able to stand is if we're caught up. If we're caught up in the rapture, that's why God says on this day that the Lord, he will be the refuge for his people, a strong fortress for the people of Israel. Okay, the only shelter on this day is to be planted on the rock, and that rock is Jesus. He's the immovable object. He's the immovable uh, uh, fortress, okay? Uh, the righteous run into, uh, run into him, and we are safe, okay? The Lord is a strong tower, hallelujah. He's our strong fortress, and he's our refuge. He's the one who draws us out of the many waters, he, because the Lord's voice is over the waters, and he brings us out into a large place. Okay, so remember, in wrath, he still remembers mercy, as the prayer in Habakkuk 3 tells us. In wrath, remember mercy, Lord. Okay, okay, because remember, uh, the proverb tells us that when the king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass. So the seven thunders uh, are connected with both wrath for those who are left behind and favor for those who are spared from um, the cloudy day. That is why when we go back to Revelation, um, Revelation chapter 4, when John is taken through the open door, uh, when John's perspective of the rapture, um, when he's standing on the earth, this is his perspective of the rapture when it happens, when he's taken through the open door, immediately, he doesn't see the hailstones. He doesn't see the earthquake. Uh, all John sees is what comes from the throne. And he, so he sees flashes of lightning. He, he hears the thunders, the rumblings, uh, and peals of thunders. And, and he sees the seven torches of fire, which are the seven spirits of God. Okay, so he, he sees three elements. He sees uh, the flashes of lightnings, the rumblings, which are noises, and peals of thunder. Okay, he doesn't he doesn't see the hailstones in the great earthquake. Okay, when John is taken through the open door, he doesn't see the effects of uh, of the cloudy day because he's he's in the place of safety. He he he's received favor. Okay, he's not subject to wrath. God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. That is why, uh, at the same time, there's a deliverance. That's why it's connected. You see, the wrath comes. You know, the heavens and the earth will shake, okay, when he thunders. Okay, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people. So it's, it's, a, both, it's, a, it's a simultaneous event. It happens at the same time. Uh, at the same time, okay, 
I can't emphasize it over uh, enough. You know, there, there's no need to finagle the scriptures. There's no need to introduce, uh, uh, you know, secondary sources. This is all based on the Bible. Uh, you know, uh, this is what the Bible says. Okay. You either believe the Bible or you don't, you know, and, uh, that's why these the teachings, you know, they run close to an hour. You know, I try not to make them an hour, but there there's so much and I don't want to miss anything, you know, and I want to cover all the high points at least. Okay, so there's no confusion, okay? Uh we don't have to twist the scriptures, we don't have to bend any elbows, we don't have to uh, uh you know, pull anything out of our out of our behind. We don't have to fudge anything. We can just look at the scriptures and let the scriptures interpret itself. Okay, scriptures interpret scriptures, okay? And as we've been going over uh, in this whole teaching series of when the temple in heaven is open, everything will change, everything lines up, everything matches, okay? Everything uh, matches with one another, okay? Uh, God has unveiled all this, which is what the book of uh, Revelation means, the apocalypse, the apocalypsis in Greek, it means an unveiling, an, un an uncovering. And God said at the time of the end, uh, the vision would be known, okay? Uh, he would unveil it. He would, he would make us to know the vision, okay? And, and now's that time because the time is short, hallelujah. Okay, so uh, back to the, uh, the third thunder. I think we pretty much covered that, okay? So let's go back to the first three, um, the first three thunders. Um, remember, Psalm 29 is, a, is, a, is playing off of uh, Revelation 10. Revelation 10, uh, because it's the, it's the angel first, okay? It's this, this angel, uh, Revelation 10, Michael, okay? Michael, who's come, who comes down, okay? He's coming down, and when he, he, he speaks with the voice like a lion, when he cries out, remember, uh, Yeshua comes with the voice of the archangel, so Yeshua's coming as well. Uh, and when uh, the voice of the archangel cries out like a lion, uh, the seven thunders utter their voices. Okay, and so we see that in Psalm 29. Uh, the first two scriptures, ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. So that's what that Revelation 10 angel is doing. When he comes down, he's giving uh, the Lord glory and strength. He's ascribing to the Lord glory due to his name. Okay, he, he's crying out with a loud voice like a lion, and then the seven thunders utter their voices, which is what we see happening here. Uh, the first thunder, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. That's thunder number one. And to make sure that we know that it's thunders, the God of glory thunders. Okay, there's no mistake about this. Uh, the God of glory thunders. When God speaks, it's like thunder. Okay. Uh, the Lord is over many waters. Okay, so that's all of, uh, the first thunder. Second thunder, the Lord, uh, the voice of the Lord is powerful. The third thunder, the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Okay, now let's go to thunder number four. Uh, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Hallelujah. Okay, so uh, we know that the Bible uh, speaks in allegories, and um, allegories is a picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. And so um, when God says that the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars, the Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon, uh, he's speaking about uh, the trees, okay? The trees of, of Lebanon, uh, the cedars of Lebanon were known as the best trees uh, at the time that uh, this, this was written. As a matter of fact, uh, I think the flag of Lebanon uh, to this day has a cedar tree on it. So Lebanon has always been known for their trees. and um, uh, But there's a, a deeper meaning than, uh, than the, you know, literal, the literal trees, okay? Uh, it's not just the literal trees, you know. Uh, the voice of the Lord is going to break all the trees, okay? Uh, we know that uh, when he sends uh, the first trumpet, uh, one third of all the trees will be destroyed um, and all green grass will be burnt up. Um, but this is also um, a picture. The cedars of Lebanon are a picture of the strong and the mighty. Okay. 
uh, the strong and the mighty people, okay, uh, are like the cedars of Lebanon, okay? Uh, the Lord, the voice of the Lord is going to break all those who are strong and mighty, okay? He, they, he's going to break all those who are like uh, the cedars of Lebanon, who think that they're the best, who, who think that they're the biggest, who think that uh, uh, there is no God, okay? Because remember, this is wrath coming. And we see this playing out uh, again in Isaiah 2. Isaiah 2 is, is filled with this imagery, okay? Because Isaiah 2 is all about the day of the Lord. Isaiah 2 is all about um, what's coming on the cloudy day. And we see uh, the cedars of Lebanon. Hallelujah. We see uh, the cedars of Lebanon um, um, right here. Uh, we read verse 10 for the last uh, thunder. Uh, so let's start at verse 10 and, and keep on reading. Enter into the rock and hide in the dust for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty. The lofty looks of man shall be humbled, and the haughtiness of men shall be bowed down. And the Lord alone shall be exalted in that day. For the day of the Lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty, and upon everyone that is lifted up, and he shall be brought low. And upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, and upon all the oaks of Bashan, and upon all the high mountains, and upon all the hills that are lifted up, and upon every high tower, and upon every fenced wall. Okay, so we see the cedars of Lebanon in connection, okay, with being high and lifted up. With being high and lifted up, and right before the cedars of Lebanon are mentioned, uh, we're, it's in reference to the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, and it's talking about that it's going to be upon all who are proud and lofty, upon everyone that is lifted up. And he shall be brought low. You see the connection? Uh, proud and lofty, uh, everyone that is lifted up, and they shall be brought low. And then the cedars of Lebanon are, are mentioned in comparison uh, because they were the best, uh, the best trees in all, in all the land in, in, the, in the ancient Near East. You know, uh, upon all the cedars of Lebanon that are high and lifted up, okay, the day of the Lord is going to be upon all the cedars, okay, all those who are proud, all those who are mighty, all, all the rich of this world who, who, who said that there is no God. Uh, God says on that day when the seven thunders utter their voices that the voice of the Lord will break the cedars. Uh, the voice of the Lord is going to break all the cedars, all those who are uh, high and lofty, all those who are high and lifted up, okay? Because his voice is going to be upon all the cedars of Lebanon. His voice is going to be upon all the cedars of Lebanon. And uh, his voice is not just going to be upon all the cedars of Lebanon. Uh, the voice of the Lord is going to break the cedars, okay? He's going to break uh, the cedars of Lebanon, okay? He, he's going to break all the proud. He's going to break all the rich. He's going to break all those who, who are highly esteemed today in our day and age, but uh, who are wicked in their heart, okay? And we see that happening when the sixth seal is broken. Remember, uh, because this is in reference to the day of the Lord, okay? And the sixth seal is what begins the day of the Lord. The, the, when this whole seal is, un, uh, is, un, is unrolled, when, when, the, when the seventh seal scroll is broken, okay? And the scroll is unrolled, okay? The temple in heaven will open. Okay, and we know that the sixth seal is uh, the coming of the Lord. Uh, the sixth seal is uh, when all the cedars of Lebanon will be uh, brought down, when, when all the cedars of Lebanon will be broken because the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Okay, and we see that here. Remember, uh, it's, it's speaking in, uh, in regards to the high and lofty. And so we read in verse 15 of, of Revelation 6, Then the kings of the earth. And the great ones, and the generals, and the rich, and the powerful, okay? The rich and the powerful, okay? Uh, the kings of the earth, okay? Uh, the great ones, okay? The generals, okay? And everyone, okay? So it's, it's, it's not just the high and lofty ones, uh, but, they're, but they're mentioned first. You know, the rich and the powerful, the kings of the earth, the great ones, the generals. Yeah, the high and lofty ones are mentioned uh, first, but it's also everyone, okay? Slain, uh, slave and free, because remember, the first thunder says that the voice of the Lord is over the waters, okay? 
And the waters represent the peoples, the multitudes, the nations, the tongues. Okay, uh, uh, we read that. We read that in uh, Revelation 17, uh, uh, 15. And he saith unto me that the waters which he saw, where the horse sits, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So we know that waters represent peoples, multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters represent uh, the peoples of this world, humanity. Okay, and uh, the first thunder mentioned is that the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is over all of humanity. Uh, but, you know, the, this fourth uh, thunder specifically mentions uh, the high and lofty, okay? The ones that think that they can never be touched, okay? Uh, the rich of this world, which is why they're mentioned uh, first in uh, the sixth seal, okay? Because his voice is upon all the cedars of Lebanon. His voice is upon the kings of the earth, the great ones, the generals, the rich and the powerful, okay? His voice is upon the cedars of Lebanon, okay? But it's also, his voice is also upon everyone, slave and free, so it don't matter who you are, rich or poor, slave or free, his voice is still going to be upon you because the first thunder is that his voice is, his voice is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, which is over all the peoples of the earth. And we see that on this day that the people are going to try to hide themselves. They're going to try to hide themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains and call for the mountains and rocks to fall on them and hide them from the one who's seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come and who can stand? Okay, and we see that uh, playing out in Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 2 is all about um, the coming of the day of the Lord, okay, and people hiding into... Um, and hiding in the rocks. We see it again here, verse 21, uh, to uh, go into the clefts of the rocks and into the tops of the ragged rocks for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty when he ariseth to shake terribly the earth, okay? He's, he's coming to shake the earth terribly, okay? The heavens and the earth will shake. Uh, look, he, he says it again here in verse 19, and they shall go into the holes of the rocks and into the caves of the earth, for fear of the Lord and for the glory of his majesty, when he arises to shake terrible, terribly the earth. In that day a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. Okay, so when this day comes, all the money is going to fail. Silver and gold is not going to mean anything anymore on this day. Maybe because from the ashes of this day, remember when the, when the whole earth is shaken on this day, um, all those who are left behind, um, the, the system that will rise is the beast system. It's the fourth beast kingdom that takes over. Uh, the fourth beast kingdom uh, takes over uh, when the Antichrist, he, 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 uh, he takes over and he, he confirms a covenant with many for one week. Okay, so he's going to bring a false peace to the earth. He's going to say, listen to me, I got all the answers. Okay, the Antichrist, he, he, he's going to appear out of nowhere. Okay, he's alive and well right now. I don't know exactly who he is, but I don't, I, I don't want to see him. Okay, I don't want to see the face of the serpent. Okay, I don't want to be around to see his reign and his rule, but he's alive on the earth right now. He, he's living, he's breathing, okay? Uh, he may not know that he's the Antichrist, but uh, he's marked out to be the beast, okay? God knows exactly who he is, okay? But uh, after the cloudy day, uh, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna rise up. The little horn, the little horn is going to rise up. The eighth king, uh, according to Revelation 17, he's the eighth king, and he he's gonna he's gonna um, he's gonna take over, and he's gonna confirm a covenant. He's gonna make peace with all those nations who are left behind. Uh, they're gonna put down their arms, and, and they're not gonna fight for for a little season. And, and he's gonna make a covenant uh, with many, and then the Jews in Israel. Uh, because the Dome of the Rock and all al Aqsa Mosque is all going to be leveled. It's all going to be destroyed. Every high tower is going to be knocked down. Uh, uh, the al Aqsa Mosque and, and the Dome of the Rock is going to be destroyed. And then uh, uh, the Antichrist, he's going to confirm a covenant with many. And the, and the Jewish people, they're going to rebuild the temple. Uh, they're going to rebuild the temple on top of the Temple uh, Mount. And... Um, uh, the peoples of the world are going to be at peace. He's going he's gonna to have some type of agreement 
um, with his negotiating skills because, you know, the Antichrist is going to be empowered by Satan and uh, uh, he's going to take over the world that has been devastated uh, from this cloudy day. Okay, and then uh, his system will be the mark of the beast, okay, because there's not going to be any silver or gold. Gold and silver will be meaningless in this day. You know, uh, there's going to be no more Walmart, no more McDonald's, you know, uh, no, no more Target, no more Baskin Robbins, you know, uh, no more Panera Bread, no more uh, Burger King, no more Carl's Jr., okay, uh, no more, no more of a, a going to the club, uh, no more hip hop music, no more R and B, no more country music. Okay, uh, every sweet song. Uh, no more rock and roll. No more pop music. Every sweet song was going to be turned into wailing and, and bitter lamentation in this day. Okay, it's just going to be weeping. Okay, nothing but weeping and wailing and howling in this day. Okay. Because everything is destroyed, okay, because of the voice of the Lord coming to destroy the whole world, okay? He's coming to, to God is coming to wreck shop, okay? He's coming to send judgment upon a world that has rejected him, okay? And he's going to destroy everything that's uh, familiar in this world today. He's going to topple everything over, okay? He's going to send the greatest earthquake in human history upon the world. He's going to rain hailstones and coals of fire upon the world, okay? He's going to release the four horses, okay? Okay, and the people are going to try to hide into the rocks, okay? They're going to try to hide in, in, in caves and, and tell the rocks and the, and, the, and the mountains to fall on them on this day, okay? And then uh, if you survive that day, but... Uh, there's a good chance that you might not because the Bible says that one fourth of the world is marked for destruction uh, in this day. Uh, when this day comes like a thief in the night, uh, one fourth of the world will die. OK, so there's, my, there, there's a one in four possibility that you'll you'll die. And, and if that's you, you're going to go straight to hell uh, because Hades follows after death when the fourth horse rides. Uh, but if you somehow survive the cloudy day. Okay, you're going to have a bald head. Everyone's going to be bald headed. Okay, and uh, you're going to be putting on sackcloth. Okay, and uh, you're going to have to uh, submit uh, to Jesus Christ. Okay, you're going to have to submit to Jesus Christ. Okay, because you cannot submit to the devil. You cannot take the mark of the beast. Okay, because that's what's coming. The mark of the beast will come. Okay, because all the silver and the gold. Are, are rendered useless, meaning that all the world's uh, money is useless at this point, okay, because everything's destroyed, every every tower, every store is, is toppled, uh, the commerce of this world is, is, is totally up, up uh, is totally leveled, okay, no more Wall Street, no more, no more stock market, okay, okay, N no more of that, okay, it, it's nothing but utter destruction and desolation, Okay, this is the last days. This it's the end of the age. Okay, it, it's the end of it all. Okay, and 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 for for a short time, God is going to allow the devil to make a last stand and to and to purge out the last remaining rebels during the tribulation period. Okay, you don't want to be left behind for that time because it's the worst time in human history. Okay. It's the worst time in human history. You don't want to be left. You don't want to be left behind to see this day. No, be, okay, because there's there's going to be no no time to uh, uh, to go to the parks. You know, no no time to go see a movie. There is there is no movies. There is no more TV. Okay, there is no more entertainment. Okay, it's it, it, it's survival of the fittest. It, it's take the mark of the beast or die. Okay, it's the end of the age, okay? It's the end of it all, okay? God is coming, okay? He's coming to set up his everlasting kingdom where peace and righteousness will rule forever. Uh, but for a, a short time, uh, once, once the cloudy day comes, uh, hell on earth is literally going to be unleashed, okay? And so let's get back to uh, these seven thunders. I got to finish this. <laughs> Uh, praise the Lord. I got to finish this. Let, let, let's keep on going because I, I don't want to keep on preaching and not finish this. Let's get this done. Uh, okay, so this was the fourth uh, thunder. Okay, so let's go to the fifth thunder. 
Uh, the fifth thunder is uh, verse 7. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. Hallelujah. Okay, we see this in Habakkuk. Uh, when the voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. Uh, that means his lightning bolts, his, his, uh, uh, his lightning that, that, that flashes, okay, on the day when he thunders from on high. Uh, we read about this uh, uh, verse 4. His brightness was like the light. Uh, well, let's read verse 3. Okay, God came from T-Man, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His splendor covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. His brightness was like the light. Uh, rays flashed from his hand, and there he veiled his power. Before him went pestilence, and plague followed at his feet. He stood and measured the earth. He looked and shook the nations. Excuse me. Then the eternal mountains were scattered. The everlasting hills sank low. His ways, his, his were the everlasting ways. I saw the tents of Cushan in affliction. The curtains of the land of Midian did tremble. Did tremble. Was your wrath against the rivers, O Lord? Was your anger against the rivers or your indignation against the sea when you rode on your horses on your chariot of salvation? You stripped the sheath from your bow calling for many arrows, Shelah. You split the earth with rivers. Okay, so here we see that uh, God is coming uh, on the cloudy day. Uh, this is all him coming uh, on the cloudy day, and he's, uh, he's flashing forth uh, flames of fire. The flames of fire are his arrows, okay? His arrows. He called for many arrows. That, that's his lightnings, okay? That's his lightnings, okay? The lightnings are, are his arrows, Okay, um, right here we see in verse 11, the sun and moon stood still in their place at the light of your arrows as they sped. At the flash of your glittering spear, you marched through the earth in fury. You threshed the nations in anger. Okay, so here we, here we go again. Uh, uh, the sun and moon will, will stand in their place. Okay, uh, when God comes, uh, the light, at the light of your arrows, as they sped, okay, that, that's, the, that's the lightning, at the flash of your glittering spear, okay, that's his lightnings, okay, when God comes, when he thunders from on high, I mean, he's going to march through the earth in fury, he's going to thresh the nations in anger, okay, this is all connected uh, with, the, uh, with, with the, the Lord, uh, with the voice of the Lord uh, flashing forth flames of fire, when he, when he sends out his lightnings, okay, uh, when he sends out his lightnings, okay, to, to, uh, uh, to judge the world, okay, he, he, he flashes forth flames of fire, okay, the flames of fire are his lightnings, okay, uh, let's, let's read Psalm 18, praise the Lord, uh, Psalm 18 says this, Psalm 18, uh, when he comes, okay, then the earth reeled and rocked, the foundations also of the mountains trembled and quaked because he was angry. Uh, smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. Okay. Glowing coals. He, he flashes forth flames of fire. Glowing coals are flames of fire. Uh, he bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. Okay. So he's coming down. Uh, he's coming out of his place. He's coming out of his place to do judgment. Okay, look, uh, right here, verse 14, and he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed uh, forth lightnings and routed them, okay? Uh, the lightnings, okay, the lightnings, hallelujah. And it all takes place when the Lord, when he thunders in the heavens. Verse 13, the Psalm 18, then the Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. And he sent out his arrows and scattered them. He flashed forth lightnings and routed them. Okay, so this is God, hallelujah. This is God coming on the cloudy day when he, when he thunders from on high, when the seven thunders utter their voices, okay? When the seven thunders utter their voices, this is God coming. It's all related to the day of the Lord, okay? The seven thunders, when they speak, they're, they're all related to the day of the Lord. When God sends out his wrath, okay? When this angel descends from heaven, which is Michael, when he cries out with a loud voice like a lion, uh, the seven thunders utter their voices, okay? So this is all connected with the day of the Lord. 
This day is connected with the day of the Lord. When God speaks and God will shake everything. And he's not only going to shake the earth, but he's also going to shake the heavens. Okay. And we see in Job uh, 36, hallelujah, Job 36, um, we see this in uh, 32. He covers his hands with the lightning and commands it to strike the mark. Okay. Uh, the lightnings, okay, and, and his hot thunderbolts will, uh, will strike the mark, okay. It's crashing declares his presence, okay. Uh, the cattle also declare that he rises, okay? This is God coming, okay? This is God coming. This is, this is God coming. Uh, can anyone understand the spreading of the clouds, the thunderings of his pavilion? Behold, he scatters his lightning uh, about him and covers the roots of the sea. For by these he judges people. He gives food in abundance. He covers his hands with the lightning and commands it to strike the mark. It's crashing declares his presence. The cattle also declare that he rises. Okay, uh, this is God coming with, with his lightnings when he utters his voice. Okay, when he utters his voice, uh, he divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire and he will hit all of his targets. He, he, when he commands it, uh, the lightnings are going to strike their mark. Okay, uh, those coals of fire are going to strike their mark, okay? Uh, he, he, their crashing is going to declare his presence, okay? Everyone's going to shake at the presence of the Lord, okay? When, when the seven thunders utter their voices, when this day comes, when the seven thunders utter their voices, the whole world is going to know that God is the Lord, according to Ezekiel 38. Okay, let's keep on going. Hallelujah. We still got two more, two more thunders. Uh, the sixth thunder, hallelujah, uh, the sixth thunder, the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. Okay, so what's the wilderness? Well, this right here is connected exactly to um, Revelation 17, 3. Okay, when, when <laughs> this is the Lord shaking Babylon the great. Look at what, look what happens in Revelation 17, 3. Hallelujah. Uh, Revelation 17, praise the Lord. God is good. Uh, and there came one of the seven angels who had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto you the judgment of the great whore that sits upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. Okay? So John was taken away in the spirit into the wilderness, and this is what he saw. John saw this in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay, so when John is taken away in the spirit into the wilderness, he sees a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Okay, and so this woman is the one who is the great whore that sits upon many waters, okay? But remember, the voice of the Lord is over the waters, okay? Uh, the first, the first uh, thunder, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. But here we see that Babylon the Great is sitting upon many waters, okay? So Babylon the Great is sitting upon many waters, and the waters which uh, Babylon the Great is sitting upon are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So Babylon the Great is sitting upon humanity, okay, because she's in charge. We read about that verse 18. And the woman which you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. And so Babylon the Great is a great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. She has power over the whole world. And so he sees uh, this woman, uh, Babylon the Great, in the wilderness, okay? So Babylon the Great is pictured as being in the wilderness, but at the same time, she sits upon many waters, meaning she sits upon uh, people's multitudes, nations, and tongues, meaning that Babylon the Great is over uh, all of humanity, okay? Because uh, she reigns over the kings of the earth. 
She's in charge. The almighty dollar is, is in control right now. Uh, but in one day and one hour, uh, Babylon the Great will come to ruin. That is why we read about the sixth, uh, uh, the sixth thunder. Uh, and the sixth thunder tells us that the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. Okay, uh, God is going to send the greatest earthquake in human history upon uh, this world. And it's going to destroy Babylon the Great totally. Okay, we read about the greatest earthquake ever uh, in Revelation chapter 16. Praise the Lord. We read about this great earthquake, okay? Uh, and we read about this in uh, Revelation 16. And there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a great earthquake, such as there had never been since man was on the earth. So great was that earthquake, okay? That happens at the sixth seal, the great earthquake. That happens in Ezekiel 38, um, Gog and Magog, the great earthquake. That happens when uh, God comes out of the temple, okay, when the, Lord, uh, when the Lord's voice will roar from Zion, and he will thunder from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth will shake, okay? So if the heavens are going to shake, you, you have to know that the earth is going to experience the greatest earthquake in human history. It, you, no one has ever seen the heavens shake. Okay, but if the heavens are going to shake, uh, if, if outer space uh, is going to shake and the third heavens is going to shake, if the whole of creation is going to shake, uh, imagine how big the earthquake on the earth is going to shake, is going to shake everyone. Okay, this is God coming. Okay, this is God coming. Okay, and the voice of the Lord is going to shake the wilderness. He's going to shake Babylon the Great. Okay, now that's why we read about the greatest earthquake in human history right here. And a great earthquake such as there had never been since man was on the earth. So great was that earthquake. The great city was split into three parts. Okay, Babylon the Great split into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. Okay, all the nations fall. Okay, everything is toppled. Every mountain is moved out of its place when the sixth seal happens. And God remembered Babylon the Great uh, to make her drain the cup of the wine of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found. And great hailstones, about 100 pounds each, fell from heaven on people. And they cursed God for the plague of the hail, because the plague was so severe. Okay, so we have the great hailstones falling. Uh, we have the greatest earthquake in human history occurring and, and all uh, centered upon the destruction of Babylon the Great. But remember, this is also connected with Ezekiel, Ezekiel 38, uh, the judgment upon uh, Gog and Magog. It goes hand in hand because the whole world is going to shake and Babylon the Great is going to be totally destroyed. Gog and Magog totally destroyed the whole world totally shaken uh, because the seven thunders will utter uh, their voice. And the seven thunders is the voice of God, uh, the voice of God, which will commence the day of the Lord. And so we move on to the seventh thunder. Hallelujah. Because remember, Revelation 10 tells us that seven thunders utter their voices. Okay, so this is the seventh one that we're about to read. Uh, let's let's number them again. Uh, number one, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. Number two, the voice of the Lord is powerful. Number three, the voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Uh, number four, the voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Uh, number five, the voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. Number six, the voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. Uh, number seven. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, all cry glory. Wow. So there's a lot going on with this seventh one. And of course, the number seven is connected with the seven thunders, which means that seven is especially uh, the number related to God. And so here we see when uh, the seventh thunder thunders, uh, there's three things that happen. Hallelujah. Uh, the voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth. 
Okay, so remember, uh, God also speaks in allegories, and an allegory is a picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. And so, uh, a deer gives birth when? A deer gives birth in the springtime and in the summer. Okay, so uh, the deer giving birth is connected to uh, the rapture of the church. Uh, we read about this in uh, the Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 2. Uh, let's go to the Song of Solomon, chapter 2. Hallelujah. Uh, the Song of Solomon, chapter 2 is a picture of the rapture, hallelujah. Um, after the winter has passed, hallelujah, uh, then the spring comes, okay? We read about that here. Um, uh, starting at verse 7, uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles uh, or the does of the field, meaning the deer, does are deer. Uh, that you not stir up or awaken love until it pleases. Okay, so he's telling the daughters of Jerusalem. Uh, uh, he he he's making the daughters of Jerusalem. Well, not not he. She, uh, the bride, the bride of uh, the the bridegroom. Uh, this is a picture of the church. Okay, he uh, the bride is is telling the daughters of Jerusalem uh, to swear uh, by the deers of the field. Okay, that they. Don't uh, stir up or awaken love until he until it pleases. Okay, so uh, the bridegroom is not going to come until the appointed time. And so and so, look at this. Look at this. Uh, and now he comes. Now he comes. Now now it's the time. Springtime has come. Okay, springtime is a, is come when when the when the deers give birth. When the voice of the Lord uh, makes the deer give birth, springtime has come. The rapture comes. The voice of my beloved, behold, he comes, okay? He's coming. The beloved is, is Jesus, okay? The bridegroom, he's coming. He's leaping over the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, looking through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, arise, my love, my beautiful one, and come away, Come away, that means let's go to the Father's house. It's time for the marriage supper of the Lamb. For behold, winter is past. The rain is over and gone. Uh, the flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the winter is past. When winter passed, that means that it's springtime, because the flowers appear on the earth. Uh, remember, uh, that the voice of the Lord gives birth uh, to uh, to the calves, okay? The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth, okay? Deers give birth in the springtime. So this is a picture of the rapture, uh, a picture of, of the rapture, hallelujah. Uh, we also see this in, in Habakkuk chapter 3, um, hallelujah, uh, where the righteous are, are compared to... Uh, 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 the deliverance are compared to deers uh, uh, springing and, and, and leaping upon the rocks. Hallelujah. Uh, we read this in verse uh, 19. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deers. He makes me tread on my high places. Okay, so uh, our deliverance, you know, God will make our feet like the deers. He's giving birth. Uh, uh, he, the voice of the Lord uh, makes the deer to give birth. Okay. Uh, and the righteous, uh, our feet are compared to the deer's feet when when uh, uh, when God gives birth, when 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 God uh, when His voice uh, gives birth to uh, the rapture of the church. Okay, uh, uh, we also uh, read about this in uh, Psalm 18. Uh, the righteous give God uh, glory uh, because we see the same imagery in uh, in Psalm 18. Hallelujah. Uh, where's Psalm 18? Praise the Lord. Psalm 18 says this. Uh, God is good. Hallelujah. Psalm 18, verse 33. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, for uh, Let's start at verse 31. For who is God but the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? Uh, the God who equipped me with strength and made my way blameless. He made my feet like the feet of a deer and set me secure 
on the heights. Okay, so this is deliverance. This is deliverance that uh, that the righteous are, are proclaiming that he made us. Uh, he made our feet like the deer. We, we escaped out of the snare of the fowler and he set us secure on the heights because the voice of the Lord, the seventh thunder, uh, the voice of the Lord, it makes the deer give birth. Okay. It's an allegory. It's an allegory. It, it's a, it's a, it's a picture, uh, that can be interpreted to, uh, reveal a hidden meaning. So this is, a uh, the voice of the Lord giving, uh, uh, giving birth. Uh, the voice of the Lord makes the deer to give birth, uh, the birth of the church. Uh, when, when our, when our feet are made like deer's feet, uh, because he's, he's taken us out of, out of the many waters, uh, but at the same time, he, he stripped the forest bare, okay, because it, it's still his wrath, okay, his wrath still comes on the earth, uh, but in wrath, he, he still remembers mercy, hallelujah, because as Proverbs uh, 19 uh, tells us, Proverbs 19, 12, the king's wrath is like the roaring of a lion, but his favor is like dew on the grass, so uh, at the same time that his voice strips the forest bare, remember all green grass will be burnt up on this day. Uh, one third of all the trees will be destroyed, okay? Uh, because the first four trumpets are, are going to be blown on the same day. Um, uh, he, he, he's going to strip the forest bare with his voice, but he's also going to give birth to the church. And uh, those who belong uh, to the church will enter into the temple. And, and, and that's why he says here, and in his temple, all cry glory. Uh, so we see that uh, all of us are crying glory at, at this time. When the seventh thunder utters his voice, all those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb uh, will go into the father's house uh, for the marriage supper of the lamb. And, and we see that in Jeremiah, hallelujah. In Jeremiah uh, 50, uh, 28. Hallelujah. Uh, we see, we see that, uh, uh, 51, I'm sorry, 50, 50, 28. Hallelujah. Uh, we see that when we escape, hallelujah, when we escape from the destruction that comes upon this world, we're going to cry glory in the temple. Uh, the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion, the vengeance of the Lord, our God, the vengeance of his temple. Remember, we're all going to cry glory. We're all going to cry glory. And this is related to, uh, remember, uh, the destruction of Babylon. The destruction of Babylon. The destruction of Babylon, okay? Uh, because the, the sixth seal uh, is when uh, his voice, the voice of the Lord, I mean the sixth, tr uh, the sixth uh, thunder, excuse me, uh, when the sixth thunder uh comes, the voice of the Lord is going to shake the wilderness. Uh, the wilderness is, is Babylon the Great. Uh, and at the same time, uh, the, seventh, the seventh thunder, we're all going to appear in his temple, those who are ready, and we're going to cry glory. That's why we read about the marriage supper of the Lamb right after Babylon the Great is destroyed. Okay, Revelation 18 is the destruction of Babylon the Great. Okay. And then Revelation 19 is the marriage supper of the Lamb. And Revelation 19 is us crying glory. We're crying glory in the temple. It's the marriage supper of the Lamb. Right after Babylon is destroyed, well, it's subsequent. You know, it's subsequent. Once uh, the cloudy day comes, it's, it's, uh, it's at the same time. We go up. And while all these elements come out, you know, we meet the Lord in the air. Uh, uh, we, we meet him uh, in the clouds, okay? Uh, well, well, all the angels come out, okay? The good angels, uh, uh, the seven angels who stand before God, they come out. The three angels of Revelation 14, they come out. The four angels who are at the corners of the world who hold the four winds, which are Connected to the throne of God, they come out. Of course, Yeshua, he comes out. And the seven thunders utter their voices, which is the voice of God. Uh, and then uh, this is what happens. Fire, noises, thunder, lightning, and earthquake. Babylon the great destroyed. And remember also, 
the devil and all his and all his demons they're kicked out so they come down to the earth uh, but at the same time we go up we go up into the father's house and we're spared uh, from the wrath we're in his temple and we all cry glory when the seventh thunder happens all who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb we cry glory okay we cry glory and then the lord sits enthroned over the flood the lord's voice is over the waters okay the lord sits enthroned as king forever may the lord give strength to his people may the lord bless his people with peace okay so we're going to see this all take place uh, blessed is he who is invited to the marriage supper of the lamb okay the marriage supper of the lamb comes when Babylon the Great is destroyed, that is why we read about Babylon the Great being destroyed, Revelation 17 and Revelation 18. Babylon the Great is destroyed, and then we rejoice. We rejoice in his temple. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah. Okay, this is the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're in his temple crying glory, just like the seventh thunder says. When the seventh thunder happens, we're, in his, we're, we're caught up to the temple and we cry glory. Uh, we declare in his temple the vengeance of our God upon Babylon the Great. So this concludes the teaching. I hope you uh, got something out of this two-part series um, with these seven thunders. Uh, the time is short. Uh, you know that God is coming soon and that if we're ready, we'll be caught up to the Father's house to meet the Lord and be with him forever and ever. So I thank you for being with me uh, in this teaching. Uh, keep the faith. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And continue to put on the whole armor of God. Resist the devil and he will flee. And may we continue to look up, pray and watch always so that we may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that are about to come on the earth and stand before the Son of Man. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We say hallelujah, Lord Jesus. And we give you all the praise in your wonderful name, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. We pray and ask it all. Amen.